Hey everyone, welcome back to Collider Scoreboard. It is the Golden Globe edition for movies, and you know what time it is right now. It's time to reveal the winners, and I'm not just here because I'm hosting this thing. I won right alongside this guy over here. That's right. Sean Roca. We both got five right. We both mm -hmm. went five for seven. The uh, the results otherwise went from, you know, a couple people had four, yeah. a couple people had three who took a few more risks than we might have, mm -hmm. but we did well. We're sharing the honor right now, yeah, and I'm, I'm proud to share it with you, me my too. friend. Me I'm, too. I'm surprised that, that I, I was as good as Perry Nemiroff. I'm going to put that in my cap <laughs> and mark it down in my calendar, 2018. I tied Perry. So, you know, right. uh, there's no one more competitive than Perry except for maybe me. So I was happy to be tied with her. Yeah. I love how that's the thing everyone's going to take from scoreboard is that I'm <laughs> no. some sort of like ruthless competitor. Um, all right. So one of the ones that we both got right was Best Picture for a Comedy. That yeah. award went to Lady Bird. Yay for Lady Bird. Also to Lady Bird was Best Actress in a Comedy. Sir Ronan took that honor. Best Actor in a Drama was Gary Oldman for The Darkest Hour. And then we also both got Best Actor in a Comedy right. That one went to James Franco for The Disaster Artist. Right. Of the bunch, Roca, yeah. what stood out to you? Any speeches? Anything in particular? Well, that moment with Franco and Wiseau was fantastic. I mean, that's what you expect from a Golden Globes, that kind of moment where he stops him. Oh, it was brilliant. And then he did his voice for him. Uh, but I also thought Greta Gerwig's speech for Best Picture Comedy was fantastic, too. I mean, every, you know, the whole night was about the Me Too movement and really pushing that forward. And so many great speeches were delivered that night to really enforce that. And I thought Greta Gerwig coming in right after Natalie Portman's mm -hmm. crack was uh, just a great thing, I think, Overall, to end the to end the to end, almost end the po podcast that will broadcast that way. Yeah, I think that was probably one of my favorite speeches of the night yeah. too. I think one of my biggest takeaways from the Globes overall was just how I was feeling as a movie lover. And it might sound really cheesy, but when I turned the TV off and I was done for the night, mm -hmm. I I kind of just sat there for a minute and I thought to myself, I'm so happy to have a foot in this industry <laughs> that that this is what I do and this is what I get to celebrate mm -hmm. because seeing her up there with her team and it's so obvious to me that they. They were all in it together, yeah. all so supportive. And really, she has had a nice, challenging climb up. This mm -hmm. is a big deal for her, a big deal for her career. She was pivotal to so many parts of this production. Yeah. I mean, not just director, she wrote the thing. This is a big deal that mm -hmm. she got to have this honor up there. And I don't know what it's going to mean for the Oscars. I think Lady Bird is a hot contender. Absolutely. But when you mush all the comedies and the dramas together, that competition is is going to be through the roof. It's going to be fierce. All right, moving on now to our wild card mm -hmm. picks. You were in a, a better situation than I was for the wild card. Yeah. You went Guillermo del Toro for yes. director yes. and Guillermo. He oh, he won, and I loved it. It was so great. I, and I legitimately, I tweeted out, I actually got very emotional listening to him talk because he was getting emotional. And I love the way that he told him to turn the music down. It's been 25 years. Let me have a minute. It's really genuine. You know, sometimes you forget, and these, these narratives get thrown out there. Oh, they're celebrities. Oh, they, they, they're not in touch with the common people. But these people work really, really hard to bring their visions to life and pursue their dreams, pursue their creative goals. And Guillermo has been doing it for so long and has had some, some uh, successes and some failures. And to him finally coming through with a film so incredible incredibly beautiful. It is a masterpiece of cinema, The Shape of Water. You see how he reacted to his very genuine, one of the most beautiful speeches of the night. Yeah, I would say that was another one of my favorite speeches mm. from the evening. He is just oozing passion and enthusiasm, and it's another instance where you just see the people around him that were part of that production, and you see how invested everybody is, how much everybody loves him, how much everybody loves what they made. Mm -hmm. You just know there's something extra special there, and I really enjoyed seeing that. Now for my wild card pick, <laughs> I went for best song, yeah. and I opted for Coco, which I did think, like, above and beyond, was going to win. That's yeah. why I chose it as my wild card. But then the award was announced, and then This Is Me from, from The Greatest Showman started playing. And even though I was really pissed that it ruined my scoreboard a little, <laughs> when that song started playing, I, I can't deny it. And really deep down, I did have a feeling that the Hollywood Foreign Press Association was going to give The Greatest Showman some sort of honor yeah. just because of what the film celebrates and a lot of what the songs mean. But really, I, I can't be so mad. I think Remember Me is a fantastic song, mm -hmm. but The Greatest Showman... 
I'm cool with that. Yeah, and this, it's a it's an inspirational song. It's a pick me up song, and it, and it's the whole soundtrack's incredible. Yeah. So it, it just made sense. And you're right. They nominated Greatest Showman. They nominated uh, Hugh Jackman, and they nominated the song. So you knew something was going to come out of this. But I love this as a Latino. That's a song that was in contention. Guillermo del Toro winning. Like I know the, the Me Too movement. Time's up. All of that is very important, very powerful. But also people of color getting represented more and more is very powerful as well. So this hopefully gives another step forward in that direction for the Golden Globes. All right, moving on now to one that we were split on. We have Best Actress in a Drama. Mm -hmm. I was right, you were not right. What'd you pick? <laughs> I took Sally Hawkins. I thought, because the film was getting so much love, it got seven nominations, I thought for sure they were going to give a little more look to what Sally was doing non-verbally throughout the whole movie, what Francis was doing so powerfully verbally throughout the whole movie and physically as well. So, But I took a chance. It didn't work out for me. I, I did go for the front runner. I went for Frances McDormand. Of course she won. But I will say that if Frances McDormand didn't win, the one that I was going to bet on was Sally mm. Hawkins. I also think the one that I'm rooting for is Sally Hawkins. And even when we do come to Oscar time, I mean, I just keep rewatching that movie and she's so good. Not to take away from Fan Frances McDormand's work in Three Billboards, yeah. because again, another fantastic performance, but there is something about Eliza in The Shape of Water that doesn't just represent great work, but there's something about that character that just strikes that connection the instant she's on screen. and. Her relationship with Doug Jones as the creature and seeing them all there made me so happy. But with three billboards, clearly they had a very big night. Yeah. And after Sam Rockwell took his award and then Frances McDormand took her award, something clicked mm. and I started to think, could this possibly be paving the way to a big win? And the other thing that tipped me off just a little bit mm. was when Guillermo won the director award, it made me think, oh, if they gave him the director award, I wonder if that mm -hmm. voting group would then think to themselves, maybe we should give something else the award. And I'm not saying that that's the way it went. I'm not saying the way that you should vote, but maybe it's just a human reaction that could have happened. And then what, wind up, what wound up happening is that Three Billboards became the big surprise by stealing one of the biggest prizes of the night, Best Picture for a Drama, where something like Shape of Water, if not one of the other movies that was in contention, was more likely to win. Were you shocked when that actually came out with the win? I really was a little bit shocked, to be honest with you, because I thought when they gave McDonough the uh, screenplay award, yeah. I thought they'd, they just gave him as many awards as I can give them, they would move on to the next thing. So when it ended up winning, I was really surprised because I do think Three Billboards is a fantastic film, an enjoyable film, and it's a badass film, but I think Shape of Water is what people love about cinema, the ability to create those kinds of things in cinema. So I think that was going to end up being uh, the, the one that won, in my opinion. I thought that should have been the one that won, but in the end, you know, uh, you can't take anything away from Three Billboards. It's a fantastic victory. And it may be pushing them forward here into an Oscar push. So this is gonna be interesting how this all plays out. Are they gonna go with the larger, more uh, visually pleasing film and a great story as well, or the more harder edge, grittier, more independent type feel uh, for movie? I'm for very movie. curious to yeah. see where things go from here. I am happy that Three Billboards did get the writing honor though, considering it's uh, yeah. not eligible for a WGA award. So I'm glad it was, it was noted here because that is a fantastic script. But mm -hmm. we're gonna have to see how things uh, pan out from here. <laughs> Oscar nominations are not all that far off. So yeah. while we wait for those bets to be placed, Roka, congratulations on Thank tying you. with me. Yeah, so I'm yeah. tying with Perry. Not winning tying with Perry. So thank you guys so much for watching this scoreboard series. Another congratulations to that guy over there. So we want to continue making these Collider scoreboard videos. So if you have some ideas for new scoreboards we can do, hit that comment section, share your thoughts there. Also, how did you guys do with this whole Golden Globe prediction race? Did you make your predictions? Did you get them right? Most of them like we did? Tell us about it below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We will see you soon with more movie coverage.